Hi guys, David Campanile here, owner of Campanile Law, located in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate. As always, before we dive into today's topic, uh, if you'd like to talk to me about estate planning or probate, you have any questions, please reach out to me at njestateattorney.com. We can schedule a strategy session to uh, discuss estate planning and probate or answer any and all of your questions. So today's topic is about um, giving a person access to your bank account. Um, so this is something that I, I see a lot when people come in and want to do their estate planning or, uh, and they're not sure how to do things. So what they've done is basically they're very worried that they will not be able to handle things themselves. So what do they do? They add a joint account holder. So, um, this basically gives that person rights to the account completely. Uh, and what do I mean by that? So they can withdraw, deposit, uh, write checks out of that account. That's fine. But when we're doing the estate plan in the will, um, and this is kind of an example that I've been running into a lot, is um, you have two children. The uh, one parent uh, trust uh, one child is living in another state. There's a child that's living close to home. Uh, they trust the child close to home to take care of them when they are old and can't take care of themselves so they make them a joint account holder but in the will it says this account is to be divided equally amongst my children this is where we run into a slight issue because by giving that child living closer to home the right to uh, sign checks uh, withdraw deposit into that account when you pass that child gets all the rights to that account and they become the primary holder. And you're hoping that that child in their um, heart of hearts is going to split that account equally with their sibling. But you can only hope at that point. So there are two things, we have two solutions to this issue um, that are pretty simple. The first one is you can go to your bank and say, look, I just wanna add a signer to my account. Um, and that would be the child that lives closest to home. So basically all this is doing is saying, hey, they can sign checks on my behalf from this account, but they don't have rights to the account. The second option is crafting, uh, is, excuse me, is drafting and executing a power of attorney, um, basically saying, look, the attorney, in fact, the person I'm granting permission to has is allowed to step in my shoes when I can no longer take care of myself and when I can no longer uh, handle uh, my affairs. They are allowed to come in sign checks, deposit, withdraw, but the perk of the power of attorney is that power of attorney, that attorney in fact has a fiduciary obligation to the individual. Um, and what do I mean by this? There's, it's sad to admit, but when we start dealing with the elderly, there is a lot of fraud, there's a lot of theft. And these are things that even though we don't wanna think about, they occur every day. We see it every day. Um, so the power of attorney in essence protects the creator or the person and establishes that fiduciary duty on the person stepping in for them. And then when you pass, the power of attorney fades and then that bank account would be split amongst the, ch the two children equally as per your estate plan. So just to put a nice little firm bow on this, don't give joint access uh, a joint account holder because that holder can can keep it all once you pass uh, and not abide by the will. Uh, two solutions, either a signer, uh, ask your bank if you can add a signer or create a power of attorney. As always, I'm David Campanile. I hope you found this uh, video helpful and informative. Uh, I'm the owner of Campanile Law, located in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate. If you'd like to speak to me about estate planning and probate issues, contact me at njestateattorney.com. I'd love to set up a time with you. Have a great day.